Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, right is lovely, right? Uh, and I hope you go caffeine for today because we know that these sessions after the lunch are kind of hard. Uh, let's just start. Building an open source community beyond the code. Um, my name is Andy. I'm user experience designer and product owner in Swiss Carolina. She's community advocate. We both work at Penpot. Uh, what is Penpot? Penpot is an open source design and prototyping tool, which is meant for um, code and design collaboration. It's a sort of uh, focus on the relationship, improving the relationship between developers and designers. What does Penpot do? Um, with Penpot, you can design interfaces. Uh, you can design interactions as well. As well. You can create rich uh, prototyping interfaces. Um, you can do presentations. These presentations have, have been done in Penpot as well. Um, you can do. You can create comments. You can uh, design in multiplayer mode, that, which means a lot of people designing at the same time in the same design file. You can do uh, like a lot of things. We like to say that Penpot covers. Uh, the whole spectrum, the whole design cycle, product design cycle. And you might know some tools that already does that, do that. Uh, not many, not many, because doing so many things is kind of hard, we know for, for a fact. Um, but we have some, some things that are different, that are not so typical to see. In fact, that those things are specific from, from our proposal. Um, our key differences are that Tempos it, it's uh, open source, which means that you are in total control of your tool. Uh, you can download it, uh, self-host it, and um, inspect the code, everything. We also work over open standards. Uh, we use native SVG, which means that uh, you are going to be the true owner of your files. You are not locked in, in an ecosystem of a private company. And we are also building the features in, in a way that uh, we are yeah, improving the collaboration between specifically designers and developers. But in the future, yeah, more stakeholders. And this was about Penpot and now what about us, um, about the talk for today. Um, Carol and myself are representing, representing like different things here. Carol is representing like uh, the community She's our community advocate, and myself as product owner, I'm representing product, okay? And this talk is going to be about product and community and about the intersection of both things, okay? Uh, so I will talk about how do we make community open, inclusive, and diverse. Uh, in Penpot, we don't like to assume just because we are open source means we are open community. So we do take actions to in, uh, make sure that we are uh, going through a more diverse, more inclusive, and more open community. And, whoop, sorry, wrong way. I'm going to talk about a few uh, things that we do. Uh, it's not all that we do, we are, but uh, I'm going to have a few examples of what we do for that. So one uh, motto that we have is uh, a share by design, uh, open by default. So we are looking to not only share what we, I mean, the code and documentation and so on, but we're also sharing our ideas, our roadmap, our interactions, conversations. So one of the examples that we have is that uh, we share our uh, Sprints, so anyone in the community can have a link for our target product and feel uh, and know what uh, features we're developing right now, what is the maturity of the feature, uh, what the team is talking about that, and so it's completely open. Also, we do share in the community space uh, not only uh, what we already did, but what we're thinking to do, what we are ongoing. This is an example of when we were developing Flex Layout, our developer was sharing uh, like, oh, like, take a look on this, give me a feedback, what do you think? And also when we're about to uh, launch main features, we also like to do user testing and bring the community to do this first beta test of the features. 
also we try to ensure uh, diversity. Uh, not only, uh, we don't think it's only being trying to wishful thinking that is going to happen is going to happen. We do take actions for it. So in many different areas, there could be role, gender, ability, geography. I will talk a bit of the geography part, just for example. So some stuff that we do that are uh, trying to seek for this diversity in this area. One of them is even offline. We try to have people all over the world. It's easy <laughs> to be uh, geographically uh, diverse when you're online because uh, the barriers there are smaller. But when you try to do that offline, then you deal with bureaucracy, you deal with visas, we deal with having to bring people from uh, other places of their culture. So, but we do assure that we try to do every time. Other things that we do, we are a smaller company. We have 30 people, so we cannot be all over the world and be sure that every single country we're doing meaningful impact. So we did choose uh, one country, every single continent to make sure that we are doing meaningful actions there. One example of that is uh, Western Africa and translations. Most of our translations is done by the community, completely volunteer, but we did look for uh, to translate to as West African languages. <laughs> I hope no marketing person is in the room right now. <laughs> so another thing we, want, we like to say that deaf to the tone of voice, we're all people. So this is a com like normal marketing thing that the product, the whole team and everybody who talks about it has their the way, the right way to talk about it, the the right things to talk about it. And we do think uh, that doesn't apply for us. Uh, my background is different than Andy's background. I am from one area, one continent, one background, and he's different. So having all these kind of voices talking about the same thing make everything more accessible, more open. Uh, so don't kill me if anyone is marketing here, okay? Another thing that we did is uh, looking to be in the right places. Uh, by default, we are, are not necessarily a dev uh, uh, only community. We do have to include the designers. So in the beginning, uh, we were only in GitHub. Uh, every conversation was there. Uh, any discussion was made there, all true issues and so on. And we decided to, that would not be the best solution for us. Our committee is uh, have other kind of roles that we want to include. So we decided to change for like a more forum uh, place and also the right way. So that uh, sometimes you need to be uh, more visual. You need to be more clear. You need to put the effort to do it in the right way. Uh, this is one example when we were having uh, talks about the contributions that we uh, have for the designers of our library and templates, and we realized that we were not doing the right way. We were at simplifies too much. We were making them to go to uh, GitHub that could be a bit scary for them. So we, we redid uh, our page and we did like a library and template tutorials and how you do it and how you use it. And we redo all the things for making sure that the barriers were less and then could be more people doing the, the contribution. Another motto that we have, community not support. Uh, uh, sometimes we have this tendency of, oh yeah, uh, I get in the community every single day in my mornings. I answer whatever questions they have there and then I'm done. And I close the thing and I'm just gonna think about them 9 a.m. next day. So uh, it's not what we think we do. Uh, well, uh, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes we do help support, but we do think they're more like a uh, part of the team. So they are part of the community, but also part of the team, part of, they shape our product, they shape our ideas, they are with us together, not uh, them and us. Uh, and uh, this also is important. Sometimes can be, of course, we have to do it, but no, yeah, it has uh, many ways that you can do it right or wrong, or not wrong, I don't, Think it's ever wrong but you also can do sometimes right and one thing we say is every contribution and in any channel we have so every time we're trying to acknowledge and appreciate every single contribution 
the smallest, the biggest, and all the channels we have can be in social media, can be in GitHub, in the community space. Every single place that we can, we try to uh, acknowledge and appreciate our community contributions. And this is one of the example. So it's one of the community contributors that thank us for thanking him. Uh, this was uh, in a pop-up in our one website. So we made sure that in the release, what we were telling about that was released, we were telling that the community contributes not only, uh, uh, it was one of the big, big uh, things that we wanted to highlight in that moment. We had many contributors and let's appreciate that. Okay, thank you, Carol. So how the community is shaping Penpot? Because this is actually happening. Um, this is for a fact, we know that the, well, we, we have many examples that exemplify the, the fact that uh, the ideas of the community, their expectations, their needs, their proposals are impacting our product roadmap, are impactive, uh, impact, impacting what we decide to build and how what we're building behaves and, and more things. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. We launched our very first alpha version in February 21, and we immediately uh, received like a lot of messages, like this one, people that were willing to contribute. I'm gonna read it. Uh, just found you guys. This is revolution in uppercase. Rocket, rocket, rocket. Um, I want to contribute. Let me know how can I. Okay. So what was our answer? Our, our answer was, well, that's easy. This, this project is open source. So you only have to go to the GitHub code. You only have to read the guidelines to see how we're doing things. Uh, fork it, do your pull request. By the way, it's uh, made in Clojure. Yeah, it's, everything is easy, right? Uh, it didn't work out. Okay, it didn't work out. We expected many more contributions and and we understood that we had a level of intention of uh, yeah, people that wanted to contribute that didn't reflect it on the, the, the amount of contributions. So we were we needed to reflect on that. We needed to rethink what we were understanding about contributions and how we were facilitating them. Um, and in the end, we thought, okay, so what is a contribution for our project? And we decided that we wanted to keep it simple. Contribution is uh, whatever that adds value, any kind of value to the project, to the product. And I took this sentence from a person that is much smarter than me. And I, I really like this idea. The idea is that your first, your first contribution in the project should be to say hi, to introduce yourself, to get to know the maintainers and to say who you are, what is your skill set, how can you help, what are you willing to do, etc., etc. And this way, you start building a relationship that at some point is going to be yeah, reflected in some kind of contribution. Um, that way we started uh, yeah, uh, fostering other kinds of contributions. For instance, uh, other kinds of contributions that were not related to code, okay? For instance, libraries and templates, uh, you don't need to code to, to, yeah, to add a library or, or template to our project. Uh, those files are pretty, yeah, are, how can I say that? Yeah, are extremely used by our community members. Uh, a lot of community members can benefit uh, from yeah, speeding their workflows thanks to these files. And you don't need to know code to uh, contribute with that. You don't need that. In fact, a graphical user interface is uh, exactly for that, for avoiding to write code. Another typical contribution that we're having um, has already been mentioned by Carol. We have translations. Um, for the moment, we have like 30 languages translated at Penpot. We only maintain two, Spanish and English. And we also sponsor some of them, like Carol said, we sponsor West African 
dialects and languages. And the other are, well, just the community contributions, which is kind of great because it's, it serves to, yeah, it helps to spread the use of the tool in different cultural contexts. We are pretty happy for that. And by the way, we are using WebLight, which is um, an open source project, a great open source project. So we encourage you to use it as well. But we also have many other types of non-code contributions, like reporting bugs, um, creating tutorials. We have, in fact, in, in our YouTube playlist, we have a, in our YouTube channel, we have a playlist with community contribute with community tutorials, which is kind of great, better than ours. Uh, we have you can contribute with documentation, uh, creating new documentation or participating in the existing one, and with advocacy, outreach, uh, spreading the word uh, of Penpot, and do also doing also yeah, some things that sometimes we some people believe that are not productive, like joining the community participating in conversations and just use, using Pempot because at least in, if you are using Pempot in the SaaS, we receive some information. This information is useful for us for, yeah, for understanding how the product is being used and what, what things can be failing and what things uh, can be, uh, are being successful, et cetera, et cetera. So those are only some examples. We have like many more. But there is a type of contribution that we are still struggling struggling with, which is uh, product design contributions. And with product design contributions, I yeah, well, this would be like the the same as core con core code contributions, but for user experience. Okay, um, um, participating in the design of the product itself, of the app itself, uh, as a designer with design proposals and. We, yeah, we didn't crack this problem. And we know that this problem, it's a problem in the whole industry, at least in the open source community, because we've been talking um, uh, in this Ubuntu summit uh, with a lot of people that are struggling with the same problem. And we know that, yeah, maybe it's not our specific problem, our personal problem, but this is something that uh, we and also the community wants to solve, okay? Why do we think that product design contribution I have? But, there are several reasons. Um, um, one of them is not here. Uh, we have like a lot of designers in our company. We have a very high ratio of designer developers. So sometimes people ask us, okay, so what do you do with your free time? Um, no, we don't have that many, much free time, but we have a lot of different design activities. Um, but this means that sometimes we feel that we don't need these design contributions, which in my opinion, it's, uh, yeah, it's not like the right mindset. Okay, but there are other problems. Uh, the designer doesn't used to know that they can contribute to, to open source, so the conversation just doesn't start. Uh, the tools for designers are not well integrated in open source software and open source uh, um, processes. Maybe not only in open source, we, have, we are like in this business, so in the design tools business, and we know that there are more problems. And this could be our fault. There are unclear and or complex processes for designers that want to contribute on, on, on open source projects and, and that for designers that want to contribute in our project. Because sometimes designers come and they ask, how can I contribute to your final product? And we used to struggle with the answer, right? But we come with a, Counter example, okay? Um, uh, two weeks ago, I guess, no, maybe three weeks ago, a group of designers from, from Canonical in the context of the Hacktoberfest uh, reached us and they asked us, okay, if we would like to dedicate our Hacktoberfest to Penpot, what could we do? And we started the conversation. You see, this is like uh, the very best example of first contribution is to, to say hi, okay? They say hi. We started the conversation. The, we proposed to them some, some yeah, some, some alternatives, some, some changes, some, some possibilities. And in the end, they decided to, 
make uh, some sort of audit for a uh, new uh, feature that we want to release soon, a very experimental one. And they made design proposals to improve the feature. And I guess this is not finished here because we hope to implement some of their suggestions. So yeah, I think they they deserve an applause. Okay. <laughs> yeah, an applause for Juan and Ege. Yeah. Five minutes. Okay. Um, but this doesn't happen magically, okay? And we you know, you need to put in practice some um, some strategies like uh, providing, yeah, I say comprehensive doc here, but it's not only documentation, you need to provide information and resources so your potential contributors can solve their doubts and their and their problems on their own pace without needing a human. And this for us was like extremely important in, in a way that uh, for us was part of our MVP. This very first MVP that we released was with uh, included extensive documentation because of that. We also started some, well, no, no this is a different example. Oh, another thing that we used to do is to provide suggestions, very explicit suggestions about where you can start to contribute to the project. This helps a lot. One way to implement that is to use good, uh, good first issues, which is, I, I'm sure you, you might know that, but yeah, you have a label to a, to a GitHub issue, and this issue uh, appears in a page called Contributions as a curated list, um, and this is where uh, first-timers uh, came to look for first issues to, to contribute with, and, and it's working great. It's not that simple as, as simple as that. You need to put effort on this. You need to provide clear paths for each issue to be solved, because if not, it's not going to happen. And this gets me to, yeah, like my main takeaway for this talk, which is that uh, if you want contributions to happen, you need to be prepared to spend time on providing this path for contributors to, to be able to contribute. Sometimes uh, you spend more time um, enabling people to contribute than the time that you will spend on solving the issues yourself. And this is fine. This is totally fine. Because what we're doing here is not only building a product, but building a community and all that comes with it. And that's it from my pen. So yeah, we hope the main takeaway from uh, you guys that uh, oh, being open source now necessarily mean being open community, and then uh, you can uh, start to think of many actions that you can take in your own communities to uh, achieve that, and hopefully you get even more contributions that you guys are getting. Uh, and thank you for uh, the Ubuntu Summit and Canonical team for the contribution and uh, invite us to be here. And thank you all. Uh, we're open for questions if you have any time. Three, three, questions. three questions. Anyone? Nope. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Excellent. Okay. So I know. I went onto the website and had a look, and it's it's a registered company. And I'm wondering if it, is it registered company making a profit? Are you um, getting money from donations? Where is the revenue coming from for for what you're doing? Uh, so right now we are uh, uh, in a phase of the you know, we got investment. Uh, we don't yet don't have a business uh, model, but we are in the process of uh, investigating uh, how it would be. We have some clues. Uh, I could go forward and telling what, what we think is going to be the, the business model. Uh, but uh, for right now, it's completely free, completely uh, everything. Or Pablo, can you explain? Hi, Pembo uh, CEO here. <laughs> um, we, are, we are going to implement what uh, we call tax decontroller, which is basically um, if you want uh, complete freedom, you don't pay anything, you get the full open source uh, package. If you want to limit, restrict, or constrain your Pempot experience because your organization that for some reason needs that, then you pay. You pay a lot. Okay. Um, and that you should be seeing some um, initial steps towards tax decontroller model, which is not an open core business model. 
um, towards the end of next year. Um, cool. But yeah, we have investment uh, from investors that typically invest in open source companies, and they are willing to experiment with uh, truly open source business models. What kind of um, expectations do the venture capital investors have of an of an open source uh, company? That it uh, creates uh, creates so much value by providing uh, an open source tool. Then when by the time that you capture some of that value, uh, you're so big that even a tiny fraction of that is a very successful business. Okay. That is uh, why for many open source projects, the only way to really become a sustainable business model is to be very big. Otherwise, uh, your generosity towards everyone doesn't pay off in terms of the salaries they have to pay. But uh, yeah, so we are targeting 0.001% of you know value capturing. But if we're big enough, then that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.